Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros here with Brian. And today we're talking about uh, how to properly adjust for uh, belt tension, the pulley, the sheave, uh, making sure you have everything aligned. A lot of things can go wrong with this, Brian. Tell me what we got going on here. First thing, obviously, power down, lock out, disconnect before you ever put your hands anywhere near a motor assembly like this. It's uh, very bad things can happen to you. Yeah. So always power down, lock out, tag out. Verify, verify, verify before you start messing around with any driven component like this. Um, lots of horror stories with that. You see the little sticker on the side of everything that shows the guy missing his fingers. That's what would happen. Yeah, okay, so what we have here is uh, we just scavenged this out of an old unit. This is a typical blower assembly setup you would see in a light commercial unit, say maybe 15 tons and under. Just a single groove pulley and belt. Um, we have here our drive pulley or sheave and here is our driven pulley. So going forward, that's what I'll refer to it as, the drive sheave and the driven pulley. So the first thing we wanna do before we even start talking about adjusting the belt tension or anything else is we gotta make sure these two guys are in line with each other. Very simple procedure for that, just a simple straight edge. You need to make four points of contact, two on each pulley face there. And what we're looking for is just to make sure there's no gap in between these. And on the back side, uh, we know we had a gap. We've since then adjusted that. Now we're perfectly lined up across both sides of this pulley. So we wanna make sure we're nice and lined up. This driven sheave, since it is adjustable, can be wider than this pulley. Now when we run into that, obviously our straight edge isn't gonna to touch face to face, but that's when we need to get them lined up and you gotta split the difference between the two. So you, if this pulley is wider, I need an equal distance on either side of this pulley. That way I know this belt is tracking right in the center groove of both of those pulleys. So we've already made that adjustment. We're good to go there. We locked the tag that. We know we're powered down. We've checked our alignment on our pulleys. We know we're good there. So next step is going to be we're going to check the proper deflection on this belt to make sure the tension's right. What can happen is if my belt is too loose, it will have slack in it, and you guys have probably seen this. You open a cabinet on one, and you see the belt kind of flopping around while it's running. That's a loose belt. Um, it's going to wear your belt out faster, but it can also damage these pulleys. It'll make a little lip or a groove inside of there from it vibrating back and forth, and then you'll have damaged pulleys, and now you'll have to change those as well. So that's what a loose belt can do. A belt that's too tight can also have an effect on the equipment and damage it. It'll be too much force on these two pulling them together. So I've got two bearings in this electric motor on this motor shaft, and I've got two bearings, one on the other end of this blower shaft. Too much force there is gonna wear my bearings out prematurely, and then I'll have bearing failure, which is a much more difficult job to do than just changing a belt. So that's two reasons you definitely wanna make sure your belt tension is correct. So we'll start doing the steps to go through that. Um, and so this is a browning belt tensioning tool. It also comes with this little chart. It should be with the tool, but this is readily available online. If you can't find it, just Google search yeah. belt tensioning manual. This will pop right up. Print they it only off. have the really bad uh, PDF. Yeah, quality. very bad PDF, and you might need a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Or like old guys like I do, I take a picture with my phone and zoom in on it. So there's four pieces of information this is gonna ask you to get before you do your belt tension. The first is gonna ask you, what type of belt am I using? So we've got different types of belts. We have A belts, we have B belts, the width of the belt's getting bigger, a C belt, and then you have different styles of A belts, B belts, and C belts. A notch belt, which will have like, looks like teeth in it, or this is a non-notched or super grip belt. And if you have any questions, it is going to be, I'll tell you right there, it's a super grip belt. So if any questions, it's gonna be right there on your belt. And on this chart, it also tells you that. What type of belt are you using? Then you also need to know, is it a new or used belt? Just because the belt's a year old doesn't necessarily mean we need to put a new belt on it. it may, I may have brand new pulleys. The belt just needs to be retensioned a little bit. You can get extra life out of a belt. Typically on maintenance agreements, you're gonna change that belt every year, but maybe you own the building and you don't wanna change the belt every year. You can you could make, get more life out of a belt than that. Mm -hmm. So you need to know, is it new or used? You need to know what size and type of belt. You also need to know what this smallest pulley diameter is. I have never seen them, I'm not saying they're not out there. 
I've never, never seen the driven pulley smaller than the drive pulley, but it's possible. But whichever is your smallest pulley, you have to have that information. And then you also need to know what your motor RPM. For us, this is a 1750 RPM motor. Very common motor, but there's many different RPMs. Those are the four pieces of info you need. Belt type is in a newer used belt. What's my motor RPM and what's the size of my pulley? And on this hard to read piece of paper here, it gives you this chart and you just match it up and then it comes over here and it tells me I should have eight pounds of deflection on this. So back in the day, everybody would say, oh, you should push it down a half inch, make sure it's not like a guitar. You know, there was just all these rules of thumb that didn't really mean anything. Um, so this is the way you're supposed to do it, right? So I looked at my chart and it tells me I should have eight pounds of deflection. So when I use this tool, there's a couple things I have to set on it first. So then I would take my tape measure, center point to center point. I come at right at about 16 and a half. So I'm going to fudge that up to 17 inches. And then you'll notice on the tool, you have two O-rings. This O-ring on the bottom is where you set the distance. Well, each one of these lines is in increments of 10. So as you can see, this is not a super precise tool. You are never gonna get that little O-ring to read exactly 17. So I'm trying to get it as close as I can. I got it right below what would be the 20 inch line. The second O-ring on the top here needs to be seated all the way down. Pushed all the way down before you start. Okay, so there's our tool. Now we need a straight edge. We need to set that guy up there where it's riding on top of our belt. Yes, yeah, so after we've made our measurements and we've set where we need to be here, we've run this top O-ring all the way to the bottom. We know we're right about 17 inches. We need to take our reading from about the center point of between these two pulleys on this belt. So somewhere roughly about right in there. You don't want to be close to this end or that. You need it to be right about in the center of the two belts to get the proper deflection. And then we'll be, as we push down, this O-ring will go up and it'll stay. So we're going to push it down till this O-ring is even with the bottom of that straight edge. You kind of got to get down and eyeball it. That to me is right there at the bottom. I'm going to release that. You can see our O-ring stayed there. And it looks like, although it's very hard to see, looks like we're sitting right at about eight pounds oh, of pressure that it took me to do this. So Johnny boom, it's my up. Johnny on the spot. I tell you, John, when I first started doing maintenance and stuff, I would have thought that belt is way too tight because I, I wasn't using this. I was going by what everybody would just tell me, you know. You get trained a certain way, and that's the way you start doing things. I would have thought that belt was way too tight, but in fact, it's right there where it needs to be. So if I did say maybe I did that and it was only three pounds, yeah. then I need to come here. I would need to loosen up my motor sled. So you're not going to move your motor. You need to move the sled that it rides on, that's what our adjustment bolts are for. We'd loosen that up, we'd pull this back a little bit, reset it, retest it, recheck it. The best thing that I learned to do in the field to make this easier for me when I had a maintenance agreement and I was going out there four times a year and I'm changing my belt once a year, but I'm always checking it and when I'd go to change it, well, it's, you know, this is a great tool and it gets me where I need to be, but you can see it is a little time consuming. Take yourself a Sharpie and make a mark so you know when you loosen it, you know right where to adjust it back to and you're going to be golden. Just, you know, if, if you own that contract, when I say own, you're the maintenance, you're the technician who is out there serving that customer and taking care of that gear. Your name's on it, you own it. I would make marks here, so whenever I loosen my sled back up to put a belt on, I put it back, I know exactly where to stop, tighten my stuff down. If I got time to do it, sure, I'm going to run yeah. and check that. But if not, I mean, you got, you could have a hundred units you've got to get to and do this. That's a great. Do point. it right the first time and make, you, make it easy on yourself the second. That's around. a great point. Speed is, uh, speed is important, yes. but accuracy is important as well. Absolutely. Uh, I, I just recommend marking both sides of the sled. Yes, that's a great so point, that way John. You don't, you don't have it Excellent cockeyed point. a bit. If I just loosen this side, I can probably pull that back a little bit, but now I pull these out of alignment again because like John said, I didn't, I've got it all cockeyed because I didn't loosen that. So great point, loosen them both, mark them both, and then it'll make life much easier and quicker on you. Save the customer money in the long end because we won't be eating up pulleys and belts. If you come up on one and you just see belt dust everywhere, more than likely these are not aligned properly. Yeah. 
or somebody's just been changing them and never checking it. Or it's field. never been aligned. I, I just always aligned. emphasize doing a proper startup, making sure you have alignment yep. at startup. So often we just That's turn right. on them and let it rip. Checking your set screws at startup. It might be lined up, but maybe they didn't run the set screw all the way down and it looks good until you run it for a while. Belt manufacturers are gonna tell you when you install a new belt to run this for two hours because the belt may stretch and then come back and check it again. That's not the most practical thing in the world to do, um, especially on this smaller gear. If I'm, if I'm on larger equipment and I've got the time to do that, I, I'm gonna go back and check it because um, they can slip. You're probably not gonna see it on this smaller stuff, but I just wanted to mention that that, that is a common Rule of thumb for new belts, but uh, it's very hard to make that happen in the field. If you're, if you're blowing and going and you've got work to do and more customers to take care of, it's not very practical to go back above ceiling two hours later, yeah. pull the panels and check that. So that's take a lot of time. It, yeah, it, it can happen. Typically, you're going to see it on the bigger devices that don't have VFDs on them. Mm -hmm. That'll stretch those belts at startup. Yeah. Makes you wish you had a direct drive fan. It does. Direct drives are nice. We're going to add a little VFD to this guy and that, that having a VFD on your gear will tremendously save the life of a belt just for that soft start feature that you get out of drives. But uh, again, like commercial stuff, this is what you're going to see a lot of. And we've got a nice open spot to work on it. It's never like this yeah. in the field. It's never like this. So just keep that in mind. Be safe. Lock out, tag out. Uh, just you know, don't, don't hurt yourself on these things. They, you get complacent, you do it so often. Just don't take chances when, you, when you've got your hands around moving parts like this. All right, there you go. Uh, thanks, Brian. Hey, uh, hit that like, hit the subscribe. Uh, if you guys know something else you wanna see, uh, let us know. We'd love to take a look at it. We have other videos on cooling towers, boilers, fans, pumps, um, and we'd love to make some more content for you. Uh, check us out next time on Mechanical Pros. <laughs>